Hi, I'm Doug. And I'm Yvette. And your search for a mental new podcast is over. Welcome to Search Complete. Hello and welcome to Search Complete, a podcast where we see what the internet has been searching for by taking the first part of a question and seeing what Google thinks we want to know. But before typing it in, we'll guess how it auto-completes, and you can play along at home. We can have a good laugh at society's expense, and then we'll realise we actually want to know the answers. And our search phrase for this week is, can you go crazy from... Do you become a loony? (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so what do you reckon is going to make people a loony? (laughs) I think uh, people will be searching, can you go crazy from taking too many drugs or taking too much weed? Yeah, I had smoking weed as well. I feel like just the fact that is weed legal was the top search in that previous one. Like, clearly people are doing it. So maybe they're like, oh, no, did I did I have too too much? much. Is that why I've gotten insane? (laughs) Probably not the best time to do it is just after you've taken the drugs. Yeah, you're just like high out of your mind. Like, oh, no, am I going to be crazy now? (laughs) (laughs) Am I going to be like this forever? What about you? What did you think people Um, would be searching for? One I had was being alone. I had that one as well. I think think this is going to be the top search one, to be honest. Yeah, I think, like, even if you don't spend a lot of time alone, you can sort of feel like, oh, man, if I didn't have anyone to talk to... Yeah, you, know, you get the you get the kind of cabin fever. You'll uh, it's kind of like uh, in The Sims, you know, if they haven't had enough social interaction, that what do they what do they call it? The bunny, the oh yeah, uh, I can't remember what it's the called. Social now. is social, it a social bunny? Yeah, the social bunny that. comes to try and help out your sim if they're a little bit alone. <laughs> yeah. Um, got anything else? Yeah. Uh, can you go crazy from not sleeping enough? Yeah. Or not enough sleep? Yeah. Uh, we've all had days or you know nights where we've only got a few hours shut eye and you wake up the next morning feeling a bit feeling weird really awful. and you can you kind of extrapolate that to like i wonder what happens if i don't get if you any ne- sleep if you or never am like, i gonna go never crazy get a proper sleep yeah i'm sure that new parents can relate to going crazy <laughs> from not sleeping enough yeah. one on the on the theme of parents uh, i was thinking can you go crazy from being pregnant or having mm. a newborn baby because I feel like people always talk about like baby brain. Do they? Yeah, I've never heard like, of know, that. What is that? It's just like when you know he someone's trying to think of something or you know make a decision and they're like, oh, I'm sorry, it's just baby brain. No, I've never heard of this before. <laughs> what baby brain? As in, if they've just had a baby and they're sleep deprived, or just like or they do, pre- they think or of if something. they're stupid. pregnant because of the way the hormones uh, okay. change. The way they think. Yeah. Their baby is like trying to do the logic for them and baby logic is probably not quite as good as adult logic. Yeah. I I wonder if it's, you know, an actual... Because I don't don't really know anything about this, so I'm just postulating here. But maybe if it's to the baby's advantage to change your behaviours. Another one I had was, can you go crazy from playing too much Fortnite. Yeah. That would be the one the parents are typing and then the one the kids are play, typing is probably, can I go crazy from playing too many games? Yeah. Or too much games. I feel like screen time is always a big debate, isn't it? Whether it's good yeah. for you or not because I guess the generations from before never grew up yeah. on screen time so the effects long term are not really known because I also had on my list too much screen time or too much social media. Yeah. Because I think that definitely has a negative effect on people's mental well-being. Yeah, I wonder what... When when we when we decided on the search phrase, when we thought of, can you go crazy from, were we thinking, like, actually delusional or just kind of mental illnesses? Or what do you think people are thinking when they actually type this in? Um, I guess any sort of changed like state of mind change state like, of mind so yeah. it could it could be a mental illness or it could be just like because when we I think of know. crazy we think of just like people just doing really weird stuff or seeing things hearing things that they shouldn't yeah i mean i think crazy is just kind of an umbrella term for anything that's not the psychological norm <laughs> yeah and yeah. i think you know in terms of mental illnesses probably it's a bit derogatory to say that someone's crazy if they've yeah. got depression or something but i think in terms of what people are searching this for, search phrase yeah. it probably would fall into that mm-hmm. um so one of the things i was thinking of was can you go crazy from owning cats 
What? what? Do, you, do you remember this? I know there's thing. crazy cat lady or whatever. But... Yeah, there's the whole crazy cat lady stereotype. And then there's also, I don't know if you remember, like in the news, there was this thing about how they found a parasite on cats that can affect your mind. As in human minds? Yeah. No, I don't remember this. Please yeah, elaborate. Yeah, it's called Toxoplasmosa gondii. It can affect, like, rats and stuff and make them not be afraid of cats yeah, anymore. I've heard of that and, like, the one which make... Uh... Ants get and they make them stand on the top of lee uh, the top of grass to be eaten by cows. Yeah, but this the same one that does the the rats not being afraid of cats. I think it also affects humans. Is this proven or just like a hypothetical? Yeah, hypothetic it's one? a thing. Wow. Like, okay. I don't know. There was a thing that I saw about it where it was like it can make you more. You're more willing to take risks and you're more likely to start a business. Wow. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if that's true or if it's wow. more of a comment on the people who prefer to own cats. Maybe that will come I don't up. Know. Anything else? I've got, can you go crazy from drinking too much Red Bull or just energy drinks in general? Red yeah. Bull, if you want to sponsor this, hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> Why would they want to sponsor you saying that Red Bull's going to make people <laughs> insane? I haven't thought that far. <laughs> we can turn this around. <laughs> I suppose Red Bull could sponsor so that you cut that bit out of the episode. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I think definitely having maybe this one ties up with the sort of like sleep, not sleeping enough. To be honest, like yeah. if people aren't sleeping enough, they're probably more likely to drink energy drinks. So then you go double insane double from insane. lack of the sleep and too much Red yeah. Bull. One final one I had was, can you go crazy from being in love? Yeah, that's an interesting one. It does make you do some weird shit. So <laughs> you're speaking from experience. No, no, just a, a friend at work. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's move on, and we are going to search these. Let me pull up this incognito tab. So you can tweet us at scpodcast underscore UK with what you think might come up or what your search results come up, because they may differ if you search at a different time or in a different region. And you can also follow us at scpodcast underscore UK on Instagram as well. And you can also just send us a good old-fashioned email at searchcompletepodcast at gmail.com. Yeah, and uh, I will include a screenshot to what we're about to type in and the results in the show notes. Right. Can you go crazy from lack of sleep? Yep, both got a point for that one then. for that one. Can you go crazy from anxiety? Oh. So that's... I don't really know what they're going for the definition of crazy there. Yeah, um... I guess this kind of ties into our last episode of uh, biological reasons yeah. for I talked about anxiety. So if you're interested in that one, do check out that episode. Uh, can you go crazy from being alone? Another point. We're doing Ooh. quite well on yeah, this Yeah, this one. is a good one. Uh, for us, anyway. <laughs> yeah. Can you go crazy from thinking too much? <laughs> yeah, I don't want to do too much thinking. <laughs> I guess maybe this one is like about... Um, people like some people have very at least from personal experience you have a very active mind and like when you're trying to sleep you've got a very strong internal monologue yeah and you're like am I going crazy here why can't I sleep why am I thinking about all these things it could probably be quite a yeah something you'd want to at least look up and also I suppose if you're a person who tends to overanalyze everything a lot you could then that would affect your like making decisions and like enjoying life in general you might think oh I'm gonna go crazy if I don't stop doing this yeah um, can you go crazy from looking in the mirror? I have no idea Maybe what this one is doing so here. so ugly, you look in the mirror and you're like, oh no, <laughs> and your mind is just blown. Well, I don't think that. Wait, where do you, genuinely, where do you think this one has come from? Because I cannot think why someone would be... Crazy from looking in the yeah. mirror. Is there some know. sort of like pop culture reference the here that we're missing? The thing that I was thinking of was maybe like Narcissus, you know, the Greek oh, myth yeah. where he falls yeah. in love with his reflection. Can you go crazy from mushrooms? That's drugs. That's another point to us. Oh, I thought maybe just normal mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> well, people like out in the yeah. fields. La la la. It's fungi pizza. <laughs> insane. <laughs> Can you go crazy from OCD? So another mental thing. Uh, can you go crazy from sleep deprivation? Another point. Did you get that one? Well, I got that. there's lack of sleep at oh, the top yeah, yeah. as well. So that's kind of... That's the same. The same, yeah. Can you go crazy from pain? That could be Oof. interesting. That would be a lot of pain <laughs> to go crazy from. And finally, can you go... Oh, it's kind of the same thing again. Can you go crazy from insomnia? So, again, Clearly lack of everyone's sleep. feeling, like, crazy from lack of sleep. I think... It, I, I genuinely think it is a real issue in current western society yeah. i don't know about also i feel like you know when you have a hangover and you just feel so shit and then but then i've had like nights where i've just not slept that much and i feel like almost just as bad yeah. and i'm like maybe 
most of it is just the lack of sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Turns out sleep is important for you. Who knew? Yeah, who knew? Yeah, yeah. Before we go away and research these topics, I just want to remind you guys, if you are enjoying this podcast, please do subscribe or follow on whichever platform you are listening to this podcast. And we'll... rate us. Yeah, and rate Five us. Stars, Five preferably. stars, preferably. <laughs> <laughs> or leave some feedback. It would be really appreciated. Okay, we're going to go away and look up some of the more interesting ones. And we're back. I'm going to kick things off with, can you go crazy from looking in the mirror? I'm really interested to understand why people were searching this in the first place, because I have no idea. You not spend a lot of time looking in the mirror? There's not some... enough that, that makes me think I'm going to go crazy. That's not what's made you crazy? Okay, let's cross <laughs> that one off. Um, so yeah, like I said before, I thought this was maybe to do with Narcissus, mm -hmm. who in the Greek mythology falls in love with his own reflection. So he's unable to leave the allure of his image, but then he eventually realises his love can never be reciprocated. And then, depending on the version, he either melts away and becomes a flower, nice. or he just commits suicide. Not so nice. But I feel like falling in love with your reflection is pretty crazy, so I thought maybe that's what this was about. Yeah. But it turns out that the um, Googlers, is that's not what track they're on, so they're actually thinking more along the lines of the Bloody Mary ritual. What? Have you ever heard of this? No, <laughs> what is this? So it's quite popular at like teen sleepovers. In the UK? Yeah. Did you do this? Yeah. Okay. But, so I'll start with the um, the origin of this. So it started in the early 20th century as a divination ritual. Mm -hmm. So uh, a young woman would walk backwards up a flight of stairs holding a hand mirror in one hand and a candle in the other hand. And there's, the house is sort of not lit apart from this. And so as she walks up the stairs, she gazes into the mirror and is supposedly able to catch a view of her future husband's face in the mirror. Oh, that's handy. Yeah, so although if you see a skull or the Grim Reaper, that's not so handy. That means you're going to die before you've got a chance to get married. Yeah, probably because you fall backwards up the stair and set your whole house alight <laughs> or something. Stupid idea. <laughs> yeah, so I thought that was quite interesting because I've never heard of that before. The modern ritual has strayed quite far from this. Okay. So now um, an individual or a group, maybe if you're at a sleepover, will stand in front of a dimly lit mirror, so often by candlelight, and then you stare into the eyes of your own reflection and then you chant Bloody Mary 13 times. Unlucky. To, yeah, to summon her. And the then Bloody Mary. The Bloody Mary apparition. Not the drink. No, you don't <laughs> just get a tomato juice. Um, the Bloody Mary apparition will appear, maybe as a corpse or a witch or a ghost, like over your face. Over your face? Yeah. Okay, not behind you, just like right on your face. Yeah. So That's then you're, kind of you're instead of staring at yourself, you're staring like at Bloody Mary... Um, and then sometimes she's friendly, sometimes she's evil, and sometimes she's covered in blood. Not so friendly. Yeah, then. so it is quite a freaky thing. It would be. Um, Especially if you're, like, at that impressionable age of whenever you do this. Yeah. So do you think that, it, you know, you can actually see something in the mirror when you do this? I think some people do. Uh, I think it's a bit like when you people say they see ghosts and aliens, your brain will, like, make you see things that you really want to see. Mm. So it, it, it's actually pretty likely, it turns out, there's this scientific research behind this. Oh, wow. Yeah, so there was a study where um, participants were asked to stare into a mirror in dim lighting for 10 minutes. That's which a is long quite time. Long. And then the 66% of the participants experienced seeing huge deformations of their own face. So 28% wow. saw a completely unknown person, and then 48% saw fantastical and monstrous beings where they where their oh, face should crazy. be in the mirror who are these people where do they find them well it's it's actually just normal people so it turns out that there's um science behind it known as troxler's fading or the troxler effect so this is just to do with the way that your brain works so your brain like because you've got so much information coming in all yeah. the time your brain has to perform this like selective processing to filter out all the excess information yeah and so the troxler's fading is also the same principle behind a lot of optical illusions and stuff like that. I thought I'd recognise the, the, this troxler thing. Yeah. Of it. So the, our brains tend to fade out features that we're not directly looking at and sort of blend them together with the surrounding stimuli. 
So if you're staring into your eyes, your like forehead can kind of fade away into the dark background uh. and maybe your cheeks will morph into like a monstrous wide mouth. And so to make it worse, our brains will like tend to fill in the blanks with something that they recognise, even if it's frightening. So, like, for instance, if you're doing the Bloody Mary ritual and you're expecting and you're to see yeah, a yeah. kind of evil nun or something, you're more likely to see that. Oh, that's really interesting. So then I also read this post on Reddit in the R <laughs> No Sleep subreddit. It was quite a long post. It was quite freaky. Um, but it was about someone who tried this, just staring into their reflection in a candlelit mirror. But it freaked them out so much that they started seeing this warped image of their face in like all the time, every reflective surface. So even if they're like washing up pots, (laughs) they see this freaky, like demon version of themselves. Um, So they had to get rid of everything reflective in their house. And it got like it was so bad they even went to see a priest. Wow, and the priest, for exorcism. Yeah, and the priests seemed disturbed by it and like doused them with holy water and gave them these like herbs to ward off evil spirits and that freaked them out even worse. And then they started seeing this warped image of themselves like not in reflections, just like standing behind their colleague's desk. Jeez. And like I'm just got got goosebumps <laughs> talking about it. It's so freaky. So I think we can safely say they went crazy from this. Uh, yeah, and I feel like it, you know they probably just worked themselves up about it. But Probably, it is yeah. it just sounds so freaky. I was it was just reading it, reading it, and I was like, oh god, I have to know how this ends. And then it just ended with, yeah, I saw them standing behind the colleague's desk. I was like, God, yeah. God. Alright, <laughs> so uh, any teenage girls listening to this podcast, don't do the bloody Mary. Yeah, it might freak <laughs> you out. I'm joking. There's no teenage girls listening to this podcast. <laughs> Although I was quite impressed by the priest who, like, you know, did something. Yeah. I feel like in horror movies, no one believes you. They're just like, yeah, yeah. that's not a thing. Uh, priests have nothing to do these days. They're like, yeah. great, an exorcism to perform. <laughs> I can finally do something. Talking about not being able to sleep, can you go crazy from lack of sleep? So, yeah, probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> so I've got a question for you. What do you think is the world record for longest time awake? Is this with, like, no drugs? Because no I drugs, feel like no with, if you had enough, like, Red Bulls and <laughs> cocaine, you could probably blast it out for a good couple of weeks, but... No, so this was done, I think, in the 50s. Okay. Or the record was set in the 50s or something, so just some, no like, Red Bull. Just some, like, bloke in his shirt and moustache. It was like, a student. <laughs> standard. <laughs> was he trying to do the record? Yeah, he, he was just trying to do it. He just had a lot of work to he do. To, so <laughs> he was actually a 17-year-old high student that wanted to prove bad things didn't happen if you don't fall asleep. Oh, uh, was he proved wrong? Well, ha- firstly, how long? Okay, I reckon you probably couldn't stay awake that long. Maybe like three or four days? Just over 11 days. Wow. He managed to stay awake. What did he do? Is he just like I don't know. Slapping himself all the time. <laughs> Who knows? He did say it was very very hard. Wouldn't wouldn't do it again. <laughs> because he ended up with being very forgetful, and he got dizziness, extreme irritability. Just think about what happens when you don't get lose <laughs> over, a couple of hours tired by yeah. 11 days. Yeah. Oh. Got blurred visions and even got uh, hallucinations wow. and sword delusions and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, he really showed them bad things don't happen. <laughs> was he trying to downplay it and then it got <laughs> too bad and he was just like... I don't you know. know. <laughs> Basically, 11 days without sleep. So sleep is clearly very important for everyday yeah. function. Uh, we don't go hallucinating all the time. What do you think your body does while it's sleeping? Um, I guess just like repair and relaxes a bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's mainly to do with cell growth and repair happens while you're sleeping. Yep. That's why if you're a bodybuilder, got to get those eight hours, get all the muscle building up. But... That's why everyone's napping <laughs> at the gym. <laughs> uh, it's also very important for like building up memories. Okay. Sleeping also helps like regulate hormones, do a lot of your like filtering out of your blood and stuff like that Okay. while you're asleep. So very important. <laughs> body's got a lot to do when you're not faffing about trying to be awake. So some weird stuff starts happening if you uh, start losing sleep. So maybe one night of little or no sleep, the part of the brain that is used for higher brain functions, I think that's the prefrontal prefrontal lobe, the bit at the front where your forehead is, um, that's used for regulating thoughts and emotions. Basically that stops working properly. So you get more emotional. Yeah. yeah. Can't, crying you just at can't dog videos. It. 
basically I say we become more primal. We lose that higher brain function. Okay. Become a lot more irritable, like I said. And basically you also stop being able to process other people's emotions as well. Okay, I like, guess that is quite a complex thing. And it's like reading people's face. Brain. It becomes a lot harder to read people's faces. So that's why you're just being rude to everyone <laughs> when you're tired. No, I, I think it's probably made down to the irritable. But they actually <laughs> did studies where people were shown different faces and they found it really hard to tell whether they were just neutral or happy. They just kind of saw everyone as neutral. Eh, that's interesting. Uh, and then after about maybe 48 hours of no sleep, uh, you're going to get some forgetfulness, not being able to remember things. You start doing things called micro-sleeping. So like, have you ever been so tired you kind of phase out with your eyes open? I've definitely done that in a few <laughs> history lessons at school. <laughs> well, you might not be micro-sleeping, but that, that sort of thing happens. Well, your for eyes like... are just slowly closing. No, no, but these guys, their eyes are fully open, but they're not... You, you don't process any external stim stimulus. Interesting. And it's just like 30 seconds of this micro-sleeping. Maybe this 17-year-old uh, kid was doing that <laughs> and people weren't monitoring it. And then anything after 48 hours, weird stuff starts happening. You'll that get. is a long time <laughs> to stay awake yeah. for. So What's the longest that you've ever stayed awake for? I, mm, I don't know. I feel like I've done 48 hours with really? maybe one hour sleep in the middle. Okay. That was not fun. And that was, I feel like you can get away with that when you're younger, like 18. I think I was probably, it was like first mm. year of university. Now, I, there's no way I could do that. I feel like none of these things is just like, you're really, really tired. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like <laughs> probably the longest I've been awake for is like 36 hours yeah. when I flew to the US. But it was just trying to do stuff and I was just like, I don't care about this. I'm really tired. Didn't see any hallucinations or... No, my like eyes that. were drooping <laughs> too much. See Couldn't see anything and my eyes closed. <laughs> yeah, so basically, you after 48 hours, 72 hours of being awake, you just start hallucinating, get extreme paranoia. Mm. Like, you just mm. can't think properly. Is it going to cause death? No. Most likely because you're just going to fall asleep instead of dying. But what if you like fall asleep in the road or on the train tracks? I'm sure your chances of death, <laughs> the cause itself isn't <laughs> lack of sleep. Well, it kind of is. Cause but... of death, sleeping. Yeah. Not getting enough sleep regularly can really impact your health, though. You can develop depression. It's, although it's not clear if lack of sleep causes depression or it's a symptom of depression. Mm, it definitely it's seems probably to be one of those both. cyclical things. Yeah, exactly. And, and they have shown that people who um, did have lack of sleep during their early stages of life, it makes them more likely to get a mental illness later okay. on in life. And also, if you've got an existing mental condition, lack of sleep can certainly like make it worse. Yeah. To conclude, can you go crazy from lack of sleep? Yes. However, it will probably only be temporarily because you will go back to sleep and everything will sort itself out. Can you go crazy from pain? I would expect so. Have you ever had like a toothache or a really bad headache and thought, this doesn't stop, I'm going to go crazy? I can't take it anymore. Uh, yeah, yeah. I feel like headaches is yeah. quite... Some headaches are so bad and they go for so long, you're just like, I can't cope with this. You just can't focus on anything, yeah. which kind of feels a bit like going crazy. Yeah. When I was researching this, I was like, okay, so what is like the worst pain? So Apart I, from giving birth. Yeah. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Throw back to episode yeah. eight. I looked, can you go crazy from torture? Okay. So that was quite interesting, actually. And so it was just sort of talking about, like, the after effects of torture and the the effects that they can have on, like, your mental state as well as, like, physically. So, like, a feeling of helplessness is central to the torture cycle and that can, like, increase your traumatisation later on. So if you're feeling more helpless, you can become more traumatised as a result. And we're saying traumatisation is kind of a form of going crazy. Yeah, so, it, you know, the traumatisation can be, like, either, like, something like PTSD, post-traumatic stress yeah. disorder, or uh, CTD, which is, like, cumulative trauma disorders as a result yeah. of it. And, so, yeah. I think I think we might have touched on it earlier about, like, what is the definition of crazy yeah. in this question. But I think anything that sort of... I think PTSD can all, yeah. that. So, like, it probably crazy is not a very nice way <laughs> no. to put it, but just anything that alters your state of mind probably yeah. so also as a result of um torture you can get depression or have a much higher likelihood of suffering from depression i can see why that might be the case you can also have like 
neurophysiological damage associated to head injuries. So you can actually have like brain damage that will affect how you behave. Affect, and yeah, and also like the the trauma can give you like trauma congruent hallucinations. You you hallucinate things related to the torture okay. because it okay. was so horrific. And also you, you can suffer from chronic pain, which can be connected to like the actual musculoskeletal damage that you suffer during the torture. Yeah. Um, so then I moved on to looking into chronic pain and how chronic pain can harm the brain. So people with chronic pain experience pain 24-7, like all the time. They're yeah, in yeah, yeah. some form of pain. And this permanent perception of pain because the pain is processed through the brain, this area of your brain is continuously active. Right. So it's um, like always firing, basically. Yeah. So, and researchers have found that in people with chronic pain, there's a front region of the cortex, which is associated with emotions, uh, fails to deactivate when it should uh, because okay. of the pain always firing. Yeah. So they did these experiments where uh, people were in like a functional MRI scanner and they had to perform okay. like a task. And the people with chronic pain actually had to use different pathways in their brain just to circumvent this firing in the region associated to pain. Oh, wow. That's, I guess, like, the brain is a muscle itself. So if I was, like, told you to do, like, 100 bicep curls and then you were given a task like lifting something, yeah. you'd have to then rely on your other supporting muscles, like your triceps and your core, to, like be able to actually perform that task because you just did those 100 bicep curls yeah. because it's kind of like this. Yeah, so and the it's... neurons that were firing in your brain actually can get worn out yeah. and they can, like, die as a result of always being active. And they Don't they... do too much thinking, people. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, don't be in too much pain, <laughs> yeah. I guess. But, yeah, I mean, I don't think it's a choice. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Um, yeah, so, and also it, like, can affect the connections between the firing, the over, you know, the overactive neurons yeah. and the other neurons that it's connected to. And th this sort of can cause then damage in the brain, which can cause depression, anxiety, and also just, like, dis difficulty in making decisions in yeah. people with chronic pain. So, basically, it's not crazy as such, but there's definitely, like, a link between physical pain and a psychological condition. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, sounds horrible, to be honest. Yeah. It's a bit of a bleak one to look yeah. up. So I looked up, can you go crazy from being alone? Which actually I think follows on quite nicely from your, uh, can you go crazy from pain? Yeah. Because um, you said like how when people are alone or they don't think there's any way of getting out, it makes it worse. Yeah. Being alone really goes against how our brain is wired. We are social creatures we crave that social interaction i think that's why you know social media took off so quickly mm. like well, you can't animals yeah, yeah honestly that's pretty much what it is and um being alone for long periods can like i mean you know i'm talking like days and months can have a actual strong negative effect on your body yeah, it can make mm. you sadder you get depression cause lack of sleep and they've even shown that people who are alone especially older people they have a much higher chance of getting alzheimer's oh really well just because your brain isn't stimulated well, in the same ways not really sure why but yeah that sounds like a good reason but basically we, although we talked about before like i think things like depression and sadness probably could be classed as crazy i really looked into like the crazy crazy you know like people coming with uh, really wild stuff yeah, coming to take you away and put you in a padded room so what do you think can you go crazy from being alone um, I mean, from the Sims experience, they definitely <laughs> yeah. go crazy, don't they? Um, I th it probably depends on like what you mean by alone as well. Like, if you were literally like people always say, oh, if you had to be in a room, you know, be locked in a room for a week and you couldn't speak to anyone and have no social media and that sort of situation, I think it would be you would kind of go crazy. Yeah. But if it was like, I don't know, you could still talk to people on the phone and stuff, it would be different. Okay, I guess it's probably more important is like when you feel alone you don't actually yeah. have to be alone but basically you can yes you can go crazy from being alone wow you can get hallucinations uh this is caused by two things one is that being alone like i said it, your body doesn't like it which means you get really stressed and then cortisol levels which we talked about last week i think go through the roof which stops your body being able to interpret external signals properly. Oh, right. So you think you see, see something, but you don't. Your body's like, there must be something over there. So you start seeing mm. things. And then on the other side of things, your body wants to try and create 
stimulus when it's not really there. So yeah, you can get hallucinations. And on top of that, you can start to uh, anthropomorphize. There is a fancy word for you, but basically make objects seem like they have personalities or are real things. Mm. So it's, again, it's your brain trying to socialize with something, even if it doesn't exist. Uh, I think a typical example is when you find marooned pirates like talking to coconuts. Yeah. Oh, Got to get friends where you can find <laughs> yeah, them. Yeah, pretty much. And the other way of kind of you might end up going crazy is that you become hyper focused on something to the point where nothing else matters because you're mm. so lonely. You're like brain's going a bit weird. I think your brain try and, tries and avoid the whole th avoid thinking about the fact that you have no social interaction. So it just becomes hyper focused on one thing. Also, I think like talking to other people and like talking through a problem with someone is kind of quite an important method of problem solving. But maybe if mm. you don't have anyone to talk to about it, you just, you know, when you keep spiralling on, like, one solution but it doesn't quite work yeah. and you just can't think of anything else because you're just obsessed with this one idea that you've had but it doesn't work. Yeah, that makes sense. And uh, there are some extreme cases where there, people have... There's, there's one thing to be alone and there's one thing to have literally no stimulus at all, mm. like, st including sounds and sight, I guess. Um, for example, solitary confinements in jail... Isolation rooms. Yeah. So, uh, going back to this, how long do you think you could last in a room with nothing to do? Literally nothing to do. Yeah, imagine it's a jail cell, oh, basically. I feel like time would go so slow, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, don't know, probably, like, only a few hours, I'd say. Yeah. I think, you, you know, there's only so much pacing you could do before <laughs> you'd be like, ah. Oh! Couldn't even have, like, a friendly toaster to, like, give you encouragement <laughs> when you start yeah. using the plot of it. Yeah. So uh, there's been a number of ethical and very much non-ethical studies to answer this question. Okay. How long could you go with, in a room with nothing to do? Um, and it was actually used as a form of torture to try yeah. and so sort of, like, weaken someone's mind. Um, but on the more scientific side of things, they found out that most people could do a couple of days at most, mm. none more than a week. Yeah. So my next question is like, I, I, love, I actually really love this question is, if you were to be alone in this situation where you had nothing to do, but you could bring one thing with you, no, um, no internet, mm -hmm. what would it be? I don't know, really. Maybe like a jigsaw puzzle, but it depends how um, long I was going to be yeah. there. No, because... I mean, so to make yourself to last as long as possible. Yeah. Or maybe like some books, but I'm not really very good at reading books now. I'd probably like, <laughs> I prefer to like listen to audio books or yeah. podcasts. <laughs> I'd, t I'd definitely take my guitar because yeah. it's something you can get better at. Yeah. And it's also a creative side of creative things as well. So you can like practice your scales and stuff and get better that way. And then also come up with songs. I think that would keep my mind busy for a reasonable amount of time. It's true. And it's like something that your mind and your hands can do. Yeah, that's true. That's a very... That's a very good point. So you can train yourself to survive extreme loneliness, to basically keep your mind busy. Mm -hmm. And I love this uh, example. Is, but there was this person called Edith Bone who was uh, a prisoner of war, and she created an abacus out of stale bread. Okay. And then used that to count out all the vocab she knew from the six different languages. Well, she knew six languages. Yeah, so she was a translator. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> can you just imagine Craig's like this abacus out of stale bread, but that... That kept her mind active. And this Quite is just good. basically what the main thing you need to do if you're ever like going you know, to try and survive extreme loneliness is to keep your brain active and entertained, basically. I feel like I'd be no good at that. I'm kind of an emotional eater, so I'd get stressed, <laughs> eat all the bread, and then I wouldn't be able to make my abacus. Maybe if it would stay <laughs> Yeah, maybe. But uh, in fact, it's interesting to see that some people actually like being alone. Yeah, there's definitely a difference between... People aren't they? Some people are very social, and some people yeah. are more lone wolf type characters. And there's a story to really highlight this fact. So uh, you know there are these people that race around the world in yachts. Yeah. There was a, one contestant loved being alone so much they continued sailing around the world, even though they could have like got to the finish line and stopped, and they were in the lead. They were like, well, they just I, sailed past the finish line, and they were like, well, I don't even think they went to the past the finish line. They just went off in whatever direction and just enjoyed what they were doing. <laughs> And you know these races, like, they take years or months even. Wow. But on the other side of this, another contestant sent fake messages to friends and then basically ended up throwing himself overboard in, like, a fit of craziness. <laughs> wow. Because he couldn't, he couldn't survive the loneliness. What, of doing a, a solo yeah, around the world Yeah, exactly. Sale? I think this really just 
highlights the difference between humans and how some people love being alone and some people can't stand it. Yeah, I mean, some people are definitely very sociable and then others are more independent, kind yeah. of lone wolf characters. Where do you think you sit on the scale? Um, I quite like being around other people and having people to talk to. Yeah, I, I would agree with that sentiment for you. For me, okay. Yeah. For me, I, I'm pretty happy being alone, to be honest. Yeah. I do need some, for sure. I definitely notice when I, like, am lonely. Yeah. But it's not very often. I feel like I couldn't cope with working from home. I'd like yeah, to, having it. someone to talk to. <laughs> You'd have to get, like, a dog or something. <laughs> Just I talk at it. I feel like it. it wouldn't be the same. No, it definitely wouldn't. But to summarise, being alone for very long periods of time, depending on who you are, definitely can make you go a little bit crazy. Yeah. Thanks very much for listening, guys. I uh, hope it hasn't made you go too crazy. <laughs> yeah. We'd be really interested in hearing from you, especially, like, I had no idea about this Bloody Mary thing. If you guys have had any experience yourselves, please let us know. You can either email us, searchcompletepodcast at gmail.com, or on the social medias at scpodcast underscore UK. Yeah, although we're not advocating this. Like, if you do stare in the mirror and you get a demon that follows you everywhere, <laughs> yeah. or you go crazy, like, don't blame us. Yeah, please, please don't. <laughs> this is on you. All right. Thanks very much, guys. We would really appreciate it if you could share this podcast around with your friends and family if you had enjoyed it. It's one of the only ways we can grow. And don't forget to leave us a review on whatever platform you listen as well. Yeah, I'm Doug. And I'm Yvette. Thanks for listening. <laughs>